15 years after the Earth is destroyed by a race of bizarre alien beings called the Dredge, young cynical labor worker Kale Tucker is approached by a mysterious space pirate named Joseph Corso, a friend of his long-lost father, with the opportunity of a lifetime. To leave his life behind and embark on a quest to find a ship called the Titan, which is said to house the salvation of the human race. Why Kale? Because he carries the map to the Titan in the palm of his hand. The Dredge wants the map as well because they will stop at nothing to see the extinction of the human race. Will Kale be able to reach the Titan in time? Titan AE is one of those underrated animated features that you just sit back and you watch and you wonder, why did nobody ever go to see this movie? Directors Don Bluth and Gary Goldman combine traditional hand-drawn animation with CGI to craft together a visual spectacle that, in my worldview, rivals even the classic Star Wars films. The characters don't look too cartoony, except for maybe the five-year-old Kale at the beginning of the film, and the character Goon. Oh, it's lunch! Ugh. Ugh. Mm. Ugh. Spaghetti derivative meatballs, sort of, anyway, and cow dog droppings. It waited before you did. And the animation is very fluid. Now, obviously, it's not Walt Disney or Hayao Miyazaki, but still, it's Don Bluth, the guy who did American Tale, All, Do All Dogs Go to Heaven, and The Land Before Time. The characters move smoothly throughout their environments, which sometimes actually are CG to give the film a three-dimensional feel so that you just don't get two-dimensional characters moving inside of a still frame painting. There are even exterior scenes of hand-drawn 2D characters inside of a CG spacesuit. Now, the CGI obviously is not that great. In fact, at times it actually looks like they forgot to do some last-minute rendering, but at least it looks better than friggin' VeggieTales. Still, the overall look of the film is great. With the setting being in the 31st century, the technology looks very sophisticated, very true to the sci-fi genre. Now, obviously, it doesn't look as advanced as, say, the old Star Trek series, but it works. The creatures have magnificent designs, even though they're never fully explained. You, you're kind of just asked to accept what they're, what they're supposed to be and just go along with the movie, no questions asked. And the fl plot seems pretty straightforward, but that being said, the film is filled to the brim with little subtleties that you can rack your brain trying to figure out. Like, what's the meaning of this scene, or how do these things fit into the story, if you're into that kind of thing. If you're just trying to watch a good sci-fi movie, it's The soundtrack is something else that really adds to the feel. In some scenes, you know, you get your basic movie music, which is composed by none other than Grammar Bell, and in other scenes, you, you get a kind of modern, edgy rock and roll sound from actual bands that that wrote their own stuff specifically for the movie. Now, for some people, it's kind of an odd mix, but for me, and I'm sure for you guys too, it helps drive the movie so that you don't just get stuck with your substandard compositions. At least the film isn't a musical in any way. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but personally, I'm not a big fan of animated features that try to be musicals, and I'm glad that Don Bluth pretty much just nixed that concept and decided to go for a, just a regular movie. Now the one thing, la the one last thing I must talk about with this film is the voice acting. Now unlike Ben the Looney, I really don't have a problem with celebrities doing voiceovers for animated films. You know, in some cases, using celebrity voices helps the movie because it's an actor that people know and love and they can even be drawn into the movie with celebrity voices. And Don Bluth assembled a really good ensemble cast to play the appropriate roles for this film. No, I'm not asking that much. I just, I just like them to kill my food before they serve it to me. Oh, 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 oh. You know, I, I do an honest day's work. I want already dead food. Oh. Is that too much for a fella to ask? I want you to risk your life. I want you to give up everything you have to join the mission where you'll face terror and torture and possibly gruesome death. Ah! Hey! This is just great. Across half the galaxy, nearly get our butts shot off by the dredge, just so we can rescue the window watch. Honor my pet, if the boy isn't at death's door, Corso wants Goon to check the map so we can set a course. Do you mind? Are we through pawing? This is the Valkyrie, not a single spot. Kale? No, 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 can I talk? We lost targeting on one of our aft gun turrets again. What? Think this is a pleasure cruise? Still committed. Do you know what it is? Neither do I. Uh, I made it last night in my sleep. Apparently, I used Gindrograt, highly unstable. Mm. I put a button on it. Yes, I wish to press it, but I'm not 
not sure what will happen if I do. So if you're looking for a good, visually stunning, little-known sci-fi film, you're a fan of animated features, or you just like Don Bluth movies, I'd highly recommend you check out Tiny Nae. <laughs> Gotta get out of here. Go. Over. Huh? Maybe next time, kid. Hey, I can fly it too. I got an idea. <gasps> Give it a shot. Exhale. You gotta be kidding. Exhale. Oh, no, no, no. 